What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create some flowing tattered banners instead of Blender using basic cloth simulation. This effect is super easy and can add a cinematic look as well as ground some of the CG that you're adding to your live action shots into the real world. Recently I applied this technique in this shot where this woman is walking out over a CG lake that I've created here with some City Builder 3D add-on assets from our procedural building collection. And you can see that in the foreground as well as the background of our shot, we have some various banners just sort of flowing in the wind here. And I'll just go ahead and pull up a preview of this shot really quick to show you guys an example of what we're going to create in preview mode. You can see that we have these flowing banners both in the background and the foreground of the shot, which create a more interesting environment for our live action shot. So anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. I'll go ahead and create a new Blender project to start from scratch in this tutorial. And of course, to start out, we'll just delete everything in our scene. And to create a very basic banner, I'm just going to add a plane to our scene. So I'll press Shift A, I'll add a mesh plane. I'll just rotate it here, I'll press R and Y and rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll just sort of create a very basic banner here. I'll scale it up on the Y axis and create something like so. Now when you're creating a cloth simulation in Blender, you need more vertices on your mesh because those vertices are used to calculate the cloth simulation when the wind goes against it. So we can't just have four vertices like our plane comes in like this. We need to actually subdivide our plane. So I'll go into edit mode here and I'll select all four corners and go to edge, subdivide. And I'll go over here to this bottom left and I'll just increase the number of cuts to at least 10. I think we want to do a little bit more. The more subdivisions you have, the more realistic your class simulation is going to look. So I'll just go to edge subdivide once more. And this should be more than enough to create a interesting looking banner effect. So I'll go back into object mode. And before we actually do our class simulation, I'm going to create a material for this banner with a texture on it. And then we're going to cut it up and delete some vertices in edit mode to create that tattered feel. So I have a few different images here that we're going to use as textures for our banner. We have a few different options here. I have this kind of tarp texture, and I think I'm just going to use this plastic tattered banner texture. So it's just plastic 0092. So what I'll do, I'll select our plane, I'll go to our material tab, and we'll add a new material, and I'll click on use nodes twice here. It's going to create a principled BSDF shader for us, and now we can add some textures and such. So I'll go to our shading tab here, and I'm just going to add our texture that we have right here. So plastic 0092, go ahead and press shift A, go to texture, image texture, connect our color to our base color input for our principled BSDF shader. And now I'll go to open and I'll find that same texture. So plastic 0092, open that image up. You'll see we need to UV unwrap our image to make our texture actually make sense on our banner here. So I'll go to our material tab here. I'm just going to open up our texture settings here. And for vector, I'll choose UV. And now we will need to UV unwrap our plane here. So I'll go to edit mode, make sure all of our vertices are selected and then I'll press U and then unwrap. And now if we go into our UV editing tab, we can actually select all of our vertices here. And I want to just scale this over the bottom part of this image so that this part of our imported texture is going to be our banner here. So I'll just kind of drag this and place it like so. And you don't have to be super precise with it or you can be more precise with it if you like, but I'm just going to create some kind of UV map for this tutorial. So something like this should be pretty good. I might bring it a little bit over. We'll go with something like this for now. And now you can see if we go into object mode in render view, we have our textured banner here. And now we'll go back into our shading tab and I do want to switch our render engine to cycle. So I'll go to our render properties, switch our render engine here. And then I want to make our film transparent and I'm going to just add a basic HDRI as well to our world settings so we can light up our banner. So go to our world properties tab, add an environment texture and import a very basic HDRI. So now we're rendering in cycles and we have this basic banner here and you can leave the materials as is. However, I kind of want to create a little bit of a translucent look since this is a plastic material. So sometimes when light hits very thin plastic, it kind of lights it up a little bit. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a mix shader right after our principled BSDF. And then I'll press shift A again, I'll add a translucent shader and add this to the bottom input here. And we'll just dial back the factor here so it's not quite too much. 
And then I'm also going to bring down the roughness of our principled BSDF shader so our material is a little bit shinier. And I'll just make the factor input on our mix shader 0.1 so it's pretty subtle. And then I'll just bring down the brightness a little bit. All right, so we have something like this. We can adjust these materials a bit later as well. You can even add a specular or normal map to this if you like, but I'm gonna go with this for the sake of the tutorial. And now that we've actually textured our banner here, let's uh, make them a bit more tattered. So I'll go into solid view here, go into layout mode, and I'm actually going to go into edit mode now. And I'll select all of our vertices and I'm just going to duplicate our banner here a few times and create some variation in it just really roughly just duplicate this a few times change the size of it a bit so I'm just pressing shift D with those vertices selected pressing G dragging it up and just kind of sketching out a little bit of a bigger banner here so now we have a collection of banners and they should all have similar UVs and now let's add a little bit of a tattered look to them so again I'll go back into edit mode and now what I'm going to do is with vertex select on is I'm just going to randomly select some pieces of our banners to just delete so I'll select these pieces right here I'll press X delete those vertices and we're just going to kind of keep doing this until we get a tattered look for some banners and again you can be as precise as you like just gonna kind of create some very basic cuts across our whole system and I'll just fast forward through this since you guys are probably getting the basic idea here. So pretty simple setup here. Now what we want to do is we want to create a vertex group to pin certain areas of our cloth simulation down so that when we add a wind force field, that portion stays where it is and the rest of our banners flow in the wind. So what I'm going to do is I'll just select these vertices at the far left of our banners. So I'm holding shift so I can select all these. Just going to select all these vertices here. Now I'm going to go to our object data properties tab, and then we're going to create a new vertex group and we'll call it banner pin, enter. And then we're going to assign the selected vertices. So I'll go ahead and assign. And just to double check that that vertex group is correct, go ahead and select it. And you can see that now we have a nice vertex group that we can use to control where we want our cloth simulation pinned down. All right, so looking pretty good here. Now we'll get to the fun part. I'll go to our physics tab, add some cloth physics to our banners. And you can experiment with these various settings, but probably the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is to use some of these presets here. You got various different options to choose from. I'm going to use the silk material preset for the sake of this tutorial for a nice glowing cloth effect. So go ahead and select this. And now you can see our various settings have changed accordingly. One thing I should do, I should press Command A and apply all transforms just for the sake of a more accurate simulation and i'll scroll down here and now what we want to do is we want to pin our vertex group down that we have created so i'll scroll down here to shape and for pin group we'll choose our banner pin that we have created and now you can see here if we play through our scene we have sort of a basic flag effect and right now we don't have any wind in our scene but that is our next step so we have a nice flowing banner you can see that the tattered look is looking pretty nice. We can see that our subdivisions are a little bit low here on the Y axis, but what I might do to solve that is just go to object and then shade smooth. And now everything looks a bit nicer. And now what we can do, go ahead and press shift A. We'll add a wind force field, scale it up here, rotate it a little bit. So it's kind of blowing at our banners. And one thing with wind force fields is sometimes when the area of your actual banner is really small, like it is in this case, it's not a very big surface area for the wind to catch. We may need to crank up the strength of the wind quite a bit. So let's go ahead and try it out here. You can see the wind is barely affecting it. So let's crank this up to say 100. You can see it's affecting it a little bit. Probably need to crank it up even more. So let's go 1000. Now you can see it's flowing pretty nicely in the wind here. Nice tattered banners, giving a very kind of a, an apocalyptic feel even. And there we have it. Now you can play around with your strength settings, maybe adjust the materials a bit. Uh, sometimes what you can do here for a more accurate claw simulation, you can turn on self collisions. So that'll create a more accurate look for your cloth sim so that your individual vertices will interact with each other a bit more. And you can play around with the other settings here as well, but this gives you a pretty nice effect. Now, before we can render the simulation, we do need to bake it. So I'll go ahead and save our project here really quick. We'll call this Tattered Banner Tutorial and save it. And now we'll go back to our physics properties tab here, scroll down here to cache, and we can actually bake our simulation. You can choose how many frames that you want your simulation baked for. I'm just going to use the default here, 150 frames. And now we can click on bake. 
and Blender's going to go through all those frames and calculate out your physics so that you don't have to play it back from the beginning every time you wanna see how your cloth is looking. All right guys, so now Blender has baked our cloth simulation. And of course, if you want to change some of these settings, you can just delete the bake, change whatever settings you want, and then come back here and bake that system again. And at this point, we can render out our cloth simulation. I do wanna mention to you guys that one of the biggest settings that I like to play around with, depending on the shot I'm trying to match this cloth simulation to, is the speed multiplier here. So by changing this speed multiplier or by bringing it to a lesser number, for example, 0.5, you're essentially slowing down the simulation by half so you'll get a slow motion feel like as if you shot something at 48 frames per second so this is one setting that i played around with specifically in that shot that i showed you guys at the beginning of this video because that live action shot was in slow motion i actually brought down the speed multiplier for the cloth simulation that we're adding to the shot to 0.65 as well so just a short quick tip obviously a lot of these settings you can play around with as well but i found that that speed multiplier helps a lot so um, anyways if we want to render this out we can press shift a we'll add a camera to our scene bring it over here go ahead and view through the camera create a nice low angle shot of our banners here maybe go to the camera settings make the focal length 35 and we can go to rendered view possibly we could add a sun to the shot it's looking pretty nice we have some nice translucency and some reflectivity based on our material i'll add a sun to our scene just give it a nice edge light increase the intensity a bit and now we have a nice tattered cloth simulation that we can render out. So to finish off this video, we'll just uh, create a new output. I'll render this out as a PNG sequence. Create a new folder here. We'll call it tattered banners. Go inside the folder. We'll do tattered banners export. Accept. And now we can render out all 250 frames of our sequence. We'll render at 1920 by 1080 at 100%. Go here, I'll bring down the samples to say 26 for the sake of this tutorial. We will denoise it, add the seed stopwatch for some noise variation. And if you want, you can add some motion blur. Why not 0.15 so it's pretty subtle. And now we can render this out. And that is how you can create some tattered flowing banners inside of Blender. I hope this video was helpful, guys. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content. And I'll see you next time.